But it means that if God protects you, you are, you are protected. There is nothing the devil can do. Just like we have meetings, God has meetings, demons also they have their meeting. They say, well, we try last year, we could it this year, we should move this one, try to put here, there, try to do that. So they are always strategizing to destroy our lives. That's what really Job is teaching. You show up in the realm of the spirit. You show, you show up in the presence of God because decrees are made in the realm of the spirit. So while you are sleeping and you are minding your own business, there are things that are being prepared against you, against your family, against your children. Because the devil can project something uh, that is planning 10 years from now. 20 years from now, they plan it already. For your son, your daughter, your, your business, your family, your ministry, he has already planned it. But if you don't show up, in, you are not present, like Job was not in heaven, the decision was taken and it was affected. So what I'm trying to tell us, now that we have a privilege also to, to have access to that realm, you must always be present there. So now when Jesus died now, he shed his blood, he became our mediator. First of all, he brought peace between us and God. So there's no conflict. Jesus broke down the middle wall of separation. So between me and, and, and God, there is no problem. I have peace with God. The peace of God that passes all understanding is in my heart because of Jesus. So in a heaven right now, we have a mediator. It means that we have someone who represents our interests. Someone who understands us. But we have someone in a heaven who's talking on our behalf. But tonight uh, we're just going to focus on six because the seventh one, I believe, it will take us, uh, is supposed to be a separate study on its own because of the, how, what is, it requires, that, I mean, for us to get into it, you require a bit of background on certain uh, things and certain uh, teachings so that we can be able to kind of pull them together. Otherwise, it's just going to be too shallow. And it, I didn't want to do that. So probably we'll see if next week or if the Lord will allow us, then we're going to focus only on that one. So you want to look at uh, the seven benefits of speaking in tongues. I want to start with, uh, with the scripture in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So, from this particular scripture here, you begin to see the Bible tells us that there are different kinds of tongues. There are tongues of men, there are also tongues of angels. The tongue of man is the, what we use, our daily language, is what we use, what we call among the human or among the mortals. And if we think about the tongues or languages are, sub, are really the basis of um, our human transaction, is through uh, our languages or the tongue that we use, that we are able to connect with uh, each other, we are able to, 
to carry out businesses. We are able to carry out relationships. We are able to, to, to achieve whatever we want to achieve just through being able to, to use our tongues or our languages or being able to communicate with one another. So really, if you think about it, the, the tongue or language is really the basis of human uh, transaction. Everything you have, one way or another, you got it because you were able to speak. I mean, you got married because you were able to speak to your wife, your husband, got a job because you went to interview, you, go, you bought that car. I mean, language really is the, ba- the uh, tongue is really is the, or language is the, the basis of our human transaction pretty much. But the Bible say, talks about the language of men and the language of angels. So the language of men is what we use in this world. The, the language of angels is what angels use in their world. So we believe no matter how they communicate, if they communicate through thoughts or whatever, that's what we can call tongues or language when it comes to angels. You know, when, uh, when Satan came to Michael, the, the book of Jude, remember they were fighting over the body of Moses. You know, the Bible just tells us that, you know, Michael said to Satan, the Lord rebukes you. They rebuke you. But for them to come to that place, they must have been arguing over the body and, you know, saying one or two things together. And, but when, whatever they were communicating, they were communicating in their languages. I don't think they were speaking in, in English or in, in Spanish or I believe they were speaking. They, Language of angels. Now we, we we all know that the devil is a fallen angel, but he still knows the language of the place, so they were able to communicate. So when we're talking about the language of angels, the language that they use on that particular uh, dimension, even demons. If you want to look at uh, at the language of angel, is a language also spoken only in the invisible dimension. Even demons also, they, they speak, they communicate, you know. Uh, remember, uh, in a book, I believe, uh, in uh, Matthew 12, or 43, the Bible says when a demon gets out of their place, he, you know, when you cast out a demon, <clears throat> that particular demon goes to a dry place, the Bible says, and the demon say to himself, so when he's saying to himself or he's thinking to himself, I wonder which language he's using. I don't think he's using French or German. They have languages they use. So the Bible says, the demon say to himself, you know what? I have to go back to my house and, and then you know, if I find it clean. So when he goes back to his house where he came from, I mean the person who was possessing before, if that particular person now is, is open to receive him, the Bible says he will go and get some demons, seven demons stronger than he, and the condition of that man, of course, is going to be worse. But think about it. When he goes to reach out to these demons, how is he going to tell them, listen, come with me. I have a, a house that I was evicted from. It, they must have been, you know, they must communicate somehow, use Language, whatever language they use, that's the language of demons. You might tell them, oh, listen, this guy, they evicted me, now he's free, I want us to go, and when we go, I'm going to give you the profile, I'm going to share with you some information, you're going to take this position. So they strategize, they plan, they, they, they plan what they do. So demons are not disorganized, they're very, very well organized. So, we begin to understand that there are languages um, with angels. There are also languages with men. Or tongues with angels, tongue with men. So when we, we say now someone is speaking in tongues, what is speaking in tongues? 
Speaking in tongues is a supernatural language. It's a language that God gives to you. You did not learn it from school. You did not get this language from your upbringing. It's no part of your, your culture. But God empowers you, gives you this particular ability so you can be able to communicate with God. Or you'll be able to communicate with your motherland because we believe heaven is our motherland. So when you are speaking in tongues, we, no, we don't only speak the language of heaven or the language of angels. We also speak the language of men. It means that when you are speaking in tongues, you can be, you can be, uh, in Zimbabwean or Ugandan. Yet, you, when you are speaking, you are, you begin to speak fluent, uh, Chinese. Or you start, start speaking fluent, uh, Portuguese. You start to follow, start to speak. Yet, you didn't learn it from anywhere. So when we're speaking in tongues, it's not always what you say, like Rekanta, Labakonte, Basanta. You can also speak the language of men. That's what Apostle Paul is telling us, even though we speak the language of angels or the language of men. You know, this reminds me of uh, one of the prophets I know is in Canada. In fact, it was meant to be one of our guest speaker one day, but I don't know. Um, he, did he, he couldn't make it. He was, he's a prophet. He was in a, he was, I believe he was in South Africa. And then before he started preaching, he's, he went in front of the church and he started speaking in tongues. So when he was speaking in tongues, he didn't know that he was speaking Shona. Shona is, a, is a, one of the languages speaking in Zimbabwe. So after he finished the service, he prayed for the people, and, and one of the lady, the lady, the people from Zimbabwe, they came to him and said, Sir, they started speaking to him in Shona, because they thought he's one of them. I mean, he's from Zimbabwe. So he said, no, I don't speak Shona. I said, no, you were speaking Shona today. You say this, you say that, you say that. Then he realized, oh my God, I was speaking the tongues of men. So you can go to a place. I remember there's another, another lady who had a problem. She, she's a Chinese. Then she was standing next to an American. And this American began to speak in tongues, but he was speaking a fluent Chinese. I mean, there is no, according to that lady, there is no way that American could have spoken that Chinese because is a deep Chinese, like, you know. And then he was speaking things that concerned this lady, and that lady gave her life to Jesus. She just had a shock of her life. And then, of course, when the man of God finished, he was trying to find out if you, you do you speak Chinese or what, what have you, but he said, no, I don't speak Chinese. So what I'm trying to tell us, when you speak in tongues, we need to understand that actually what happens. You see, when we give our lives to Jesus, we become citizens of the kingdom of God. Actually, we need to read it in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. The Bible says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So when we receive Jesus, the, the day you say yes to Jesus, you become part of the kingdom of God. Now maybe you, you went to a Baptist church or a four square church or Pentecostal church or Charismatic church or prophetic church or apostolic church, whatever church you think you went to. And then they preach to you the gospel in that particular environment. And you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You did not become part of a denomination. 
You did not join a religious group. You became part of the kingdom of God. And because you are a part of the kingdom of God, God is your king. And the word of God now is the standard over your life. So what governs you after giving your life to Jesus is a citizen of the kingdom is greater than your denomination or your religious group or your affiliation, which means if I'm part of this particular church or kingdom life, yes, I go to kingdom life, but I'm part of the kingdom of God. I pledge allegiance to the word of God, to Jesus Christ. Now, if kingdom life, they begin to teach me things that compromise the word, things that compromise the kingdom of God, then I have the right not to abide by that particular organization if you are from any church or any particular group we came from because our allegiance is to King Jesus and his word. But what I want us to understand is that when you became a believer, you did not join a religious group. You did not become a religious person. You became a son. You became a daughter. You became a citizen of the kingdom of God. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus. You see, when now we become part of the kingdom of God, we become citizen of the kingdom of God, God now allows us to enjoy the culture of the kingdom what we call kingdom life. God wants us to enjoy what he has made available in his kingdom. Let me just say this. We need to understand that when you are part of the kingdom of God, there are privileges. And most of us, we think, oh, I will enjoy my life when I go to heaven. What we call you want your, your pie in the sky. So while you are waiting for your pie in the sky, you can have the steak in your plate while you are waiting. Another word, what I'm trying to tell us, there are privileges in the kingdom that we enjoy, not only after we have left this body. We, we are also able to enjoy the privilege or the benefit of the kingdom while we are here on earth. And one of those benefits that God wants us to enjoy it to become part of the culture of the kingdom. And one aspect of any culture, it is a language. When you begin to speak the language of, of the place, it speaks of belonging. Now, understand there are a lot of aspects to, to any culture. You know, the food and dress code and behavior. But language is one of the main key because as you begin to speak the language of a particular culture or particular place, you are able to interact and to connect with the people of the place. So when you give your life to Jesus, heaven is your motherland. Now here on earth, we are just passing by. We are here to fulfill an agenda that we call purpose or God's will for our lives. But our citizenship is in heaven. So God now has given us a language that we speak while we are here on earth. Is part, or, or is part, or citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Because that's where we belong. Now the question is, as we are part of the kingdom of God, who can speak in tongues? That's where we're going to be, begin from. 
Those who have received Jesus, if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus comes in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now gives you the ability to speak in tongues. So what I'm saying, who can speak in tongues? Any believer can speak in tongues. The disciples spoke in tongues. The early father of the church spoke in tongues. We also, as we believe in Jesus Christ, we have received him as our personal Lord and Savior. We are able to speak in tongues. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, And these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. So when you, you receive Jesus, Jesus comes to live inside of you. The Holy Spirit presence or he announces his presence by you speaking in tongues. So you can never speak in tongues without the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who is the custodian or the, the guardian of all kingdom realities. So when Jesus left, he told the disciples not to leave Jerusalem but to wait. After they waited and the Holy Spirit came, Fire, the tongue of fire came upon them. The first thing we, we saw or we see, they start, they started speaking in tongues. So it's an announcement that the Holy Spirit had just arrived. So if you, you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongues. So the speaking in tongues is one of the evidences of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can have the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. Because of many, many reasons. Maybe you are not taught. Maybe unbelief. Maybe you doubt. Maybe fear, shame. There are so many reasons why most of believers, they don't speak in tongues. But there is no reason why you should not speak in tongues. If you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongues. But just in passing, I want us to know there is a big difference between the speaking in tongues and the gift of speaking in tongues. The speaking in tongues is when the Holy Spirit comes and uh, He gives you the ability. The Bible says when in the Acts chapter 2 verse 4, we're going to see that later. We speak, the Holy Spirit gives our utterance, but there is also the gift of tongues that we, I think, we spoke of that in the past in First Corinthians chapter 12. If you want to know more about you, you just go to now YouTube channel, we're going to get all this detail. We don't want to go back to that. So I want us to look at the benefit of Seven benefits of speaking tongues. The first benefit of speaking tongues is that when you are reda kanta laba kanto lebro stakan teleda shatea rebro shande, when you are speaking in tongues, you are speaking mystery to God. You are speaking a language whereby the Bible says your mind is unfruitful. Even your mind does not understand what you are saying. The devil does not even understand what you are saying. That's why the devil hates speaking in tongues. Because he, he, he rather have you speak in, in French or in English. Because what we need to understand is that the devil is not omniscient. He does not know everything. Some of the things the devil knows is how we react over things. So when you react, he sees like you don't have money, you start panicking. Then you realize, mm, this man, he, he doesn't have confidence uh, in God when it comes to finances. He's going to start attacking you there. The devil also knows uh, what we, you know, uh, what's happening with us when we are praying. Father, I'm praying. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to go to China next week. Father, help. Oh, so he's planning to go to China next week. So they begin to... <laughs> To plan against you or what have you. Or when someone is prophesying over your life. 
They say, you know, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that, you're gonna be that. So they oh. So because the devil knows when you are receiving a prophecy, that's God's mind for you. So he begins to plan, okay, this is what God is planning to do. I'm gonna also plan against him. So that's why speaking in tongues is so important that sometimes when you, you want you you can just have a thought of something. Then if you don't want anybody to know, you can just think about it. Speaking in tongues. Because the devil has no clue what you are saying. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mystery. It means that the day is just passing yourself, passing, passing the devil. Just as your mind might be as confused what the spirit the uh, you are saying in tongues, the devil also does not know. But you know, we're going to get to that. When you are praying in tongues, you can also ask God to interpret. Say, God, I want to know what I'm saying in tongues. We're going to get to that later. So the first uh, benefit of speaking in tongues is that you speak mystery to God. You speak straight from your heart to God's heart. Second benefit of speaking in tongues is that when you speak in tongues, in tongues, you are building your spirit man. You are building yourself. In Jude chapter 1 verse 20, it says, By you, beloved, building yourselves upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, when you are praying in, in, in tongues, or you praying praying in tongues or praying in the Spirit, you are building yourself. And that word to build in the Greek is like someone who building a house or building an edifice. Look at it this way, like you are you have a house and then your house is lacking windows. So when you're going to recount, talabakan, you are putting windows, anything that is lacking in your life, while you are speaking in tongues, you are adding this stuff. Or so I need carpet in my la- in my house. You put in a carpet. Remember, because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you build that temple, you clean that temple is w- when you you speak in tongues. In First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse four, even clarify it better. It says, "He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself." By you prophesies, edifies the church. But here we're not talking about prophecy. We're just focusing on tongues. So he said, when you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. You are building yourself up. So, so if you want to increase your level of grace or you want to increase your level of wisdom or whatever God has for you, you have to be a person who speaks in tongues a lot. You know, it, you don't have to speak in tongues only when you're rebel, but you can sit. I do that all the time. I can be sitting with my wife. We are talking. I'm speaking in tongues. Uh, Rebo, no, like that Rebo. I'm sitting. My, I'm looking, but I'm speaking in tongues. I'm sleeping, but I'm speaking in tongues. I'm driving. You always have to be speaking in tongues because you have to build. There are areas in your life that you 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 say, Lord, I don't like this area in my life. I want to do better. I want to fix here, fix that. You can't get a knife and go fix your soul. We are going to help you, your spirit man. We are going to help you build your spirit man in speaking in tongues. The third benefit of speaking in tongues is that the tongue will bring, bring unity among nations. You know, one of the things like really, we are, I mean, the UN and all these nations are fighting for today is really to try to put nations together to bring a unity to bring uh, peace and things like that. But as I've always said, there are some ingredients in terms of uh, fulfilling certain things. If they are no part of our our makeup, we'll never be able to achieve the expected outcome. For instance, when we want to talk about peace, you know, UN every year is spending billions of dollars around the world trying to seek for peace. But peace does not come from men. There is someone who's called the Prince of Peace. So as long as we don't have a Prince of Peace, we can never have peace. 
and the Prince of Peace is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the same, you know, when we begin to speak in tongues, with the t- tongues will be able to bring men and women together. You know, in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says, Cretans and Arab we heard them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Now imagine Cretans and Arabs. These are different people from different places. But because they were under the unction of the Holy Spirit, because they was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, as they began to speak in tongues, as the Holy Spirit came, he brought them together, and through speaking tongues, they were able to remain together. And I believe a church that speaks in tongues, the, the church that really focuses on the, on the things of the Spirit, the church where you find members and believers in that particular house, they are together, they are united, they serve God with one purpose, purpose one agenda because one of the the reason the holy spirit came is to bring us out of our human tradition to bring us out of all the things that separated us from god so we can be able to worship god all heartily and tongues has the ability to do that glory to god in Acts chapter 10 verse 46 the bible says for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify god then Peter answered them and all that. So we see the, the, the here again they heard uh, uh, people were not even Jews. They began to speak in tongues. In other words, they kind of join join the company of Jews. They become Jewish because Peter thought that only them could speak in tongues. But Peter now came and found out that they were non-Jewish men and women who could just speak in tongues. So I want us to understand, the tongue has the way of bringing unity in the body of Christ, unity in the church, unity with yourself. When you feel you are always confused and you are divided, you are consistent in your thought, as you begin to speak in tongues, the tongue has a way to bring coherency, whereby you become a whole, you become one within yourself. You know, if you read in Genesis, I believe chapter 11, you notice when God wanted to scatter the, the nations, what did he use? He used the tongue. In the Bible, ta- Bible tower. Because people had one purpose, God said, well, what am I going to do to scatter them? I'll divide their tongues. So he divided them because they were not pursuing divine purpose. But in the book of Acts, when the believers came together. They wanted to pursue God's purpose. God united them. How did God unite them? By sending the Holy Spirit and giving them a new language. Glory to God. The fourth benefit of speaking in tongues is in feeling of the Holy Spirit. Every time you speak in tongues, you are being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's like uh, you keep on getting uh, another cup. Keep on getting another drink. Remember, Apostle Paul said, I believe in Ephesians 5, 18. He said, we should not be drunk with wine, which is the debauchery or dissipation. But we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you get continually filled with the Holy Spirit? As you continue speaking in tongues. As you continue speaking in tongues. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 4. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So notice they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak. So the speak, speaking in tongues or tongues is one of the high ways to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you want God to use you in your generation, you want God to use you tremendously, you have to be a person who can shande, canto robo. You know, like I was saying the other day, like, I really honestly I understand the Bible says we should pray in tongues, we should also pray in understanding. But in my private prayer time, I just use that. You know that scripture we read last week where the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, we don't know what we should pray as we ought to. So the Bible is telling us, well, we... We don't know what we should pray as we ought to. Meaning, let's say you are, you know how to pray, but you don't know really how to do it. It means that 
let's say you want to pray for for your finances. You know I want to pray for your finances, but you don't know how to present that particular case before God. Therefore, you need a help from the, we need a help from the Holy Spirit. From that one, me, I'll conclude it. I don't need to, I mean, I speak, if I'm a pray, let's say, if I pray three hours, I'll tell you the truth, I'll pray three hours in tongues, just that. I might take out, Father, thank you, thank you. So when I pray, I know God, when I speak in tongues, there are thoughts going to pop up in my mind. Then I'll know, okay, I'm praying for actually a uh, sister, so and so. Then I say, Father, bless you, and so, so. I go back in tongues. Le cante, le bra, shakante, le bra. If I don't pray for five, six hours, I still speak in tongues. I, I've resigned. English, French, what have you. But remember, it's not a sin. You, the Bible says you can pray in tongues. You can also pray, pray in understanding. But I think it's better to sp- pray in tongues, speak in tongues. Glory to God. So, the more you speak in tongues, the more you are being filled with the Holy Spirit. The more you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the more power you have, the more grace, the more you grow in the grace of God, the more you are able to do greater things with God. So who doesn't want to do greater things with God? We all want to do greater things with God. Therefore, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Remember, it's like a cup. The Holy Spirit is unlimited. I like using I think I used it one day uh, many years ago. It's like a ba- basin. You know, you you put, uh, the Holy Spirit will, will fill you to the capacity you give to him. So when you come with a cup, he fills the cup. You bring, a, I don't know, a bigger vessel, you fill the bigger vessel. So how do we pre- present our vessel to the Holy Spirit? Every time we are speaking in tongues, we are, able, we are present, presenting our vessel to the Holy Spirit to be filled. The fifth re- benefit of speaking in tongues is that speaking in tongues releases the potential of a believer. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm preparing certain things on a share, but I'm being tempted to say them today. No, I'll start them next time. And these are things like really, they are making me think a lot. Because I'm looking at what Jesus did, accomplished for us on the cross. I look at what, uh, me when I think about believers, I don't look at our church. I look at the, the broader picture of the church. I look at the believers everywhere. I just realize, Father, there's something, is, something is not in place. What is that missing? But if you want to really release the full potential of the church or the full potential of the believer. You want to release the full potential God has deposited inside of you. You have to learn. You have to learn or have the discipline of speaking in tongues. Remember, not only in your prayer time, even when you are driving, when you are in the bathroom, you are having a shower, you are asleep before you fall asleep. You can just sit there in your mind, you three seconds, and fall asleep in tongues. Glory to God. In Acts chapter 19, verse 6, the Bible says, And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Look at that. They spoke in tongues and prophesied. When you read the scripture, the whole chapter 19, you notice the Bible says they came to this particular place. They found some disciples. They asked them, hey, were you guys baptized with the Holy Spirit? They said, we never heard there is such a thing as baptism of the Holy Spirit. They, we, they said, well, then they asked them, what kind of baptism did you receive? They said, oh, we received the baptism of John. Then the apostle said, no, you, that baptism, baptism of John was, was only for the forgiveness of sin. Then they taught them the word. And the Bible says, when they lay hand on them, what happened? They received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues and prophesied. Now remember this church where people were confused. Not confused. Let me not use the word confused. They were limited in their knowledge. They did not know much because you, you have access to what's being made available to you. Let me just say this. You know something really I've been thinking about the whole week. Even today when I was praying during the day, 
I say to myself, I say, Lord, knowledge is more important than even prayer, than fasting, than all of that. Because you can fast, but you are not fasting properly because you don't have the proper knowledge of fasting. You can pray, but you are not praying properly because the Bible says that you ask, in the book of James, you ask, you do not receive because you, you, you ask and miss. In other words, you don't ask properly. So there is a proper way of praying, the proper way of fasting, the proper way of doing all sorts of things. And that comes with knowledge. And these particular people now, they were limited because they did not have any knowledge. And fair enough. And God will always favor us, bringing us knowledge. So God brought them knowledge. And when they got that knowledge, the Bible said they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Now I want you to notice the potential that was in that church. So in that, that church, they were sitting over prophecies. I mean, they had the potential to prophesy, the potential to see in the realm of the Spirit, the potential to raise up great men and women of God who could operate in the supernatural. But they could not do it until the Holy Spirit came. They spoke and prophesied. So the, the, the tongue comes now there. It begins to release the potential that is in the church. And some of us, our churches, we are very limited. We are not experiencing a lot of things because we are only coming and we need to understand first of all, the church is not a, a religious organization. It's not a community gathering. Or The church is a, the, the house of God. The Bible says a pillar of the truth. It means that when people come, they should be able to encounter the supernatural in a greater measure. And how do we begin to saturate, saturate our churches with the power of God? Is when every time we come, we begin to speak in tongues. Now understand the Bible says, Apostle Paul say, when one there are people, if we know we have a guest, probably they don't understand, you know, speaking in tongues, we should pray in English, also pray, so that these people, they are not lost, they think we are crazy. But I believe speaking in tongues will release the potential that you are carrying in the spirit. The sixth benefit, the seventh is as I'll continue next week. The sixth benefit of speaking in tongues is that speaking in tongues brings dominion. Glory to God. It brings dominion. You know, we are created for dominion. I think we read that scripture in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. When God created us, he created us for dominion. In fact, everything we do in life, we are looking for dominion. You know what? Do you know why you go to work? You wake up early in the morning. You wake up early in the morning. You come late. Even when you are tired, you go. You try to have dominion over material things. Because when you are working there, they pay you money. And that money is able to help you acquire the desires of your heart. So everything you see men and women are waking up, you know, they want to get a degree. What are you going to get a degree for? So you can look just smart, no? You want a degree because it gives you more options. You might get a better job or more opportunities and things like that. So men and women, we are still, we are, we are just looking for dominion. But speaking in tongues brings us to the place of dominion. Brings us to a place whereby we begin to walk over the works of God's hand begin to uh, experience the supernatural in a great measure. In the first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8, Apostle Paul said, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. So remember, Apostle Paul, there are many of them, but he came to a place of preeminence. He came to a place of uh, supremacy. Among the men, he was the greatest apostle. And he began now to communicate to the Corinthians that he speaks in tongues more than all of them. So it was obvious that, that the main reason why he was able to experience the things they experienced than any other normal men or women. So if we are really going to have dominion, we are going to be above because he said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So if you want to have a, 
uh, creativity more than uh, people in your work field? Do you want to have more creativity more than uh, people in your business? You have to learn to speak in tongues when you are praying for your business, speak in tongues when you are praying for your, your work, your job, your church, whatever. Continue speaking in tongues. Glory to the living God. Now, I want us to understand. When we speak, you can speak in tongues as I'm concluding. You can also sing in tongues. Not only that we speak in tongues, you can also sing in tongues. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we are able also to pray in the Spirit, able also to sing in the Spirit. Me, like if when I'm praying, let's say I'm praying, I'm saying, I'm praying, Rabo Shande Rebo Shanta Rabo Shanta. You can also take your tongue, you begin to sing in tongues. Rebo Shande Rebo Sharababa Kuriando Se. Hirababa Andorobo Shiriando Se Rebo Shandaraba. Reba Sande Robobo. Erabo Shande. You can take a song that you are singing in English, you sing it in tongues. Let's say, a great is a God. See with me. You can say, A rebo shande ribo seriando robo shanda. So you are using your tongue, but you are you, you are you are speaking your tongue, but you are using the lyrics of the song that you love. Rebo shande ribo ria soria. Rasende rebo resande. Risekete rebo shanda, rekete. Risanda rebo shanda riabo sanda. Reshende ribobo, rekenta. So you can speak in tongues. You can also pray in tongues. Now I remember many years ago. Not many years ago. It's been five, six, seven years ago. Now I. I've never done that, but I've seen people, it just came in my mind, I don't know, I'll just share with you. Um, I saw, especially in Africa, where people were casting out demons, they were speaking in tongues with demons. Now, um, I even saw one man of God uh, recently doing it. Um, no, God is God. Because the Bible says we speak the, the, the tongue of angels. We also speak the tongue of men. We also speak the tongue of angels. So it's cutting out de demons uh, in uh, in uh, in tongues. He say, uh, he, according to him, he's speaking the language of those demons. And I could say, demon, get them out of He comes to say, look at the man that told da 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 da. And the the demon said, he can't do by she. He can't do by. He cannot. So they kind of arguing. But I was just watching it myself. Well, I don't judge. I've I've never seen it before. And this thing really it was. Five years ago, it was big, especially, I'm sorry to say, in Tanzania. I saw it in Tanzania, a lot of people going on just, I had the demons. God is bigger than our experience, bigger than our knowledge. So, when a demon, of course, enters a person, that demon is going to speak the language that the person speaks. So, if I'm casting, me, I've cast out demons, and uh, when a demon, you know, I know a demon is uh, he speaks Swahili. If I know to speak Swahili, I can cast. If I do not speak Swahili, the people are there say, anyone can speak Swahili. The demon will come, and the, the person will come, and then I speak, and they tell the, the, the demon, and they're going to come up. So I want us to understand that speaking in tongues has benefit. So I want you to go and begin to speak in tongues. No matter where you are, when you are driving, but sometimes I drive, you know, when you stop in the red light, 
And then I see people are looking at you, but they think you, oh, then I pretend. When I go, Arebo, Shak, hey, Rekantabo, Shak, Rekata. When I see people, red lights, because you don't want to look like, oh, the lift is not going upstairs, you know. Glory to God. God bless you today. We are going to pray. I want you to go ahead and begin to speak in tongues, and that's going to bring, uh, it will add a lot of values in your prayer. I mean, all your, some of you pray two hours, three hours, all these hours, just speak in tongues. Of course, when you are speaking in tongues, God will give you, uh, you know, you are just going to see the thoughts are coming in your mind as you are speaking in tongues, you are focusing on the Lord, but spend most of your time speaking in tongues. And then you're gonna, we're going to be able to enjoy all these benefits. And the seventh benefit, I'll speak about the seventh benefit probably next week because I want to cover quite a few things on that particular topic. Glory to God. We are going to pray. Remember, we are still fasting. We continue tomorrow. On Sunday, because we have our fasting, uh, we have service on Sunday. Uh, I want us to finish at least on time. 12 o'clock. When it's 12, you can finish your fasting. Unless you want to carry out the whole day, but otherwise 12, we'll finish our fasting. And then because we had to organize, some of you have parents, you have children, you have to come. I mean, the time to organize the kids is not always uh, easy when you are so tired. We are going to pray. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor. Father, you are prayer answering God. This is our season of strength. Thank you, Father. I believe in this season of strength. God will begin to visit us individually, even our churches. God will begin to draw men, just like we had, a, you know, last Sunday or so. Someone came at the door, he found the brothers. Oh, what's your name? He came, he stayed. God will begin to draw people. People begin to come because it's our season of strength. Even those who left us, one or two, they might come back. <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Father. We glorify your name for you are indeed a good God. Father, in our season of strength, we are trusting you, Father. We want to end this year, Father, strong in every area, especially in our spiritual work. Father, some of, some of you are struggling in the area of your you walk with God. You just find the, finding it very hard to kind of have a consistency. You're just flip-flopping. You're just finding it hard. You're wondering, how in the world are I going to do this? You know, I'm finding it hard. Even prayer, sometimes you feel like some days I feel I've prayed well, something. Some days I feel I'm disconnected. I'm all over the place and it's worrying you a lot. I want you to know you're going to get there. You don't have to push pressure on yourself. As you continue to speak in tongues, the Lord is going to be building you himself. Remember, one of the benefits is that as you speak in tongues, you are building your spirit, man. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. In this year of strength, we really want to end up the year strong. We don't want to end up the way we started off, Father. Show us your favor because you are a good God. Father, we give you praise because we know this year is a year we're going to testify. That many will be touched. Some of us, it's my prayer that when you finish this year, you should look back and say, you know what? I, I feel I'm in a different place. Maybe you're wondering, Apostle, we are fasting too much. You got us into three days, seven days, uh, 14 days, 21, 40 days. You know, you might not appreciate it now. But one day, even after 20 years, you will thank God that you learn to pray and fast. So as we are embarking during this season of fasting, I want you to try, even though you find it a hard, even a half a day, try and trust God and say to yourself, Lord, this year I want you to finish. I want to finish strong. Father, we thank you as we are finishing strong by your grace. Because we know it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit, says the living God. Father, we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
Amen. God bless you.